Thanks. Look, everyone here has a mobile, right? Can you go onto web page for me? 3.debase.com. Everyone. 3.debase.com. D-A-B-A-S-E.com. Have you all got a green screen? Show me the green screen. Green screen. Are those people just raiding our food? They're hungry too. They're hungry. Aren't they here to see me? No, nobody wants to listen to me. Okay, so is everyone... Show me the green screen, Valentine. Show me the green screen. Green screen. Okay, well, um, let's see. Do you need to be on the subnet, same subnet with you? No, nope, yeah. doesn't matter. So these are all your, all the people that are connected, I guess. We got, we got an iPhone. I guess most of these are either Apple. They're, looks like they're all Apple. Isn't, isn't, there, isn't there a single Android phone here? Yeah. Not seeing it. Yeah, that's Android 4.4. What's the URL again? Sorry. Free that the base come. So this is just a simple demo to show that you guys are all sort of connected through WebSockets to a server and I can redirect you all to a web page re instant instantaneously. Ooh. It could be an arbitrary URL. So I mean you all got you all know what a webhook is, right? Uh, who's configured a GitHub webhook or something like that? But the cool thing about WebSockets is that you don't have to have a machine on the internet. You can, you can dial out from your browser to a server running Golang, and as soon as there's a, 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 an event being fired, you can basically send it to clients behind a firewall, behind a NAT. It's pretty, it's pretty damn useful. And this, is, this is why my talk is uh, like Web uh, 3.0. Because I think, I think, I dare say, you know, HTML, what is it, Web 2.0, HTML5, I think the biggest thing, and it would be great to hear what you guys think, I think the biggest, most important thing right now in the web standards game is, is web sockets. Because sockets are usually, well, you couldn't really get access to them because they were firewalled or not easy to get to. Now, with web sockets, you, you, can, you go through the normal channels, port 80, port 443, TLS, and you can get, you know, socket, socket fu functionality, which allows very, very interactive apps. I mean, AJAX is one level of interactivity, WebSockets is another. It's it's amazing what you can do with it. I'm running, um, I'm running. This is like the open source version of a of a service I'm running in production. And the production version, if you can imagine, is a, much like this: a big digital display. And when someone wants to update their digital display, they use a WebSocket and it just changes to another web page. It's very simple. And this is the code. Uh, I was just talking to you, Worry, about how perhaps not to do it. Oops. Is this my code? Yeah. There's other examples. Uh, this is the meat of the, um, the meat of it. I'm using this X. Does uh, anyone use X packages besides me? X means um, experimental, I think, and hopefully this will be in part of the uh, the GoLang base, whatever it's called. And it's pretty easy to use. Uh, I don't know if you want, you want to look at the code too much. It's, I guess, the whole thing is uh, less than 80 lines of code. I have a couple of templates there. But they're, they're pretty mundane. 
basically you just use this WebSocket um, object and you just uh, ID the, the things coming out onto it and then you uh, and then I simply just write to them when I want them to uh, when I want them when I want them to disconnect. But there's all sorts of different ways of doing it. Yes. Yeah, so, anyone interested in WebSockets? Anyone use WebSockets already? Okay, another guy over there. What do you use your WebSockets for? Okay. I found that the WebSocket sometimes the delay is maybe because the Raspberry Pi needs to be to save the energy so the Wi-Fi signal is not strong. So after some kind of time and the response is not really can we take about Is this through a browser on the Raspberry Pi or no 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 the the Raspberry Pi is taken as a server. Oh it's actually using a server. Well this is only as good as your uh as your internet connection really. I'm not sure, I didn't figure out, but I mean, at the beginning of the connection, there is some time expense, but after some idle time, All right. it could take a bit longer to respond, about 10 seconds, I would say. Well, the, this, this, the service that I'm running up on, the, on, on that domain is running yeah. on AWS EC2. And I've tried all sorts of VPSs in Singapore, DigitalOcean, GPL host, some other crappy ones, and the EC2 network. Very good. Um, some people have told me that you're limited to about 64K uh, WebSocket connections. I was actually at AWS Meetup last week, and this guy was telling me that he was doing 100,000 odd WebSocket connections on one EC2 server with a tweaked uh, Linux kernel. And he's doing a uh, WebRTC type stuff with WebSockets. So that's it. It's a lightning talk. I um, hope I piqued your interest with WebSockets. Uh, there's a ton of things you can do. And the great thing about it, in, in Golang, you can implement it very, very simply, um, a server. And it's very fast. I couldn't see any performance problems with it. But then again, I'm just using a stupid app. So, how, how do you see like WebSocket compared to say HTTP2? What? HTTP2. Well, uh, HTTP2, I think it's just like you call it serialized connections for 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 delivering uh, assets or something. But the WebSocket, so you keep a connection open. Uh, I mean, depends how you want to build your app, I guess. Um, no, it's different. It's different. Like WebSockets is for interactivity. Uh, HTTP2 is just for the basically streamlining of a uh, normal yes. HTTP delivery. Usually over SSL, I guess. Yeah. Yep. Uh, what about the uh, load balancing? Load balancing? Yeah. Well, I haven't really. Uh, proxied or messed around with those sort of things but the way that I usually design it for my production thing in, my, in the back of my head I just have my client my JavaScript code or I, I even wrote a, a client in uh, in Golang basically I, I code into my, my client that uh, if if the service becomes massively popular that I, I basically code some logic in my, my client to choose a different server you know, you know what I mean. That sort of approach. Uh, so if I get three servers, then I have some sort of like hashing. What do you call it? What's the what's the, the hashing what's algorithm? Mm -hmm. Like an e an equal hashing algorithm to basically uh, distribute the load. I just I just usually hash the ID and then map it to the uh, map it to. The, I've done a similar thing and other things. So, yeah, I don't think it's a problem to scale this up or map it to different servers. I'm, I, I only have about, um, I only have about 6,000 odd, uh, oops. Come on, is there? I, I only have about 6,000 users, so, so it's quite well below the, the sort of in crazy thresholds.
Yeah, yeah so easily. But do you have do you have hundreds of thousands? No, I, I mean, uh, if you look at the uh, iPad game, uh, I mean, it doesn't support the uh, web browser. It doesn't? Yeah, it doesn't. Well, app engine sucks. Move no, on no, to no, another thing. App engine actually rocks. What? It rocks. Yeah, you, you, you don't need to worry about... So you don't have app engine, you don't have the full Golang SDK, yeah, you, have, yeah. you have Google crawling up your ass and ripping down your <laughs> spleen. <laughs> No, yeah. no, no. I don't. Yeah. Does App Engine? Do they even have something in Singapore? Um. That sucks. That sucks real bad. <laughs> Come on, man. There's different options, and App Engine definitely sounds like not a good one. Yeah, but to to go to the defense of App Engine, they, they do support uh, sockets. Like oh, the, I thought he said. I thought he said. It's, uh, yeah, but socket is. I think, it's only the uh, GS channel. Yeah, just draw. Up yeah, I know. I've used App Engine a little bit. Yeah, they have these weird sort of wrappers to do some similar th things. I don't know. I think the offering is quite bad. Personally. But, but dude, load balancing is actually pretty damn easy. Yeah, but for that's okay. It's, it's it is. Story. It's not. It's you just map it onto a different server. You yeah, just distribute you the need, load. You need to know the IP address for, for, that, for, for your incoming. Uh, that is a trivial you matter. If you don't, if you keep, you don't look at the uh, coming uh, IP address, you don't, you don't need to do the load balancing. I mean. Well, I haven't played with it, in all honesty, uh, that much, but I believe you can proxy these web sockets. So, Golang, I haven't, uh, I mean, I've watched some tutorials. It's very easy to create a proxy if you want to do it that way. I just, I, just from experience, I know that, that coding distribution or load balancing in the client is going to work here because I control the client. Yeah, that's right. I just don't know why, the, you know, behind, behind the scene. Google can do so many things, but the Microsoft is still not in the, in the app engine after so many years, three years or four years. I don't know what the story is. Yeah. The story is you shouldn't use the Google app engine, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, uh, um, I didn't mention that there is actually a, a, a Gorilla-based WebSocket implementation. Uh, some people say it's better, but I, th I found this works for me. Um, no, actually, the, the reason to use the... Uh, the because they use channels. No, not, not that it's uh, how say it? it passes all the web sockets tests that. Uh, oh, the RFC. Da, yes, da, 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 da. Yes. So for this one, it doesn't pass a lot of the tests. For you to make a rudimentary web socket, yes, it's okay. Yeah. But certain browsers won't be able to connect to this properly. So An another thing I thought was interesting is that um, I I I don't know. I, maybe you guys know more than me, but like sometimes I. I connect to the, the service uh, on, on Safari, and then I lock and then I lock the screen, and and I'm still somehow connected. Like sometimes, like if I'm if I do something on another page, you know, like you have different tabs on Safari, you can see that it, uh, the socket is still open, and when something does change, you can see the change in, in the other page without it being on focused. So I don't know how uh, Safari has implemented it, but I think it's quite interesting. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, why isn't there a cool game built with WebSockets and the Safari browser? Come on, guys, write one. Shuan, you listening? Yeah, write a game with using WebSockets. Give some pizza. Uh, yeah, think. Yeah, it's it's remarkably robust, especially if you use a good server like EC2. Um, obviously, my client, if it loses connection, it reconnects all the time. That's it.